Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be building a Sudoku solver. So this video is going to be split up into two parts. The first part is going to be to explain the whole algorithm. And I tried to make it as easy as possible in such a way that even a beginner could understand it. And the second part is I used Python code in order to implement our algorithm. So let's get right into it by talking about backtracking. All right, so backtracking. What exactly is backtracking? Uh, I'm pretty sure it sounds like a completely new term, but in reality, it's something that we do every single day and you just don't know what it's actually called. So let's say you're doing some sort of task and this task might have several parts. So let's say you do the first part and then you move on to the second part. And once you reach the second part, you try all possible methods, but nothing just seems to work. So now what you're going to do normally is you're going to take a step back, go back to your first part, revisit it and kind of analyze it again and look for a different solution. So that's the whole concept of backtracking where we backtrack our steps, maybe go back a step or a couple steps and analyze or look for a different solution. So that can be explained very simply by a maze, right? So let's say we have this maze. And it's a simple maze. We start over here and we need to get to the end point, which is over here. So let's just look at different ways we can do it. So in the beginning, I'm going to start off like this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here but then I'm going to end up getting stuck over here. So now what I'm going to do is instead of going all the way to the beginning and looking for other solutions, I'm just going to move back one step. So I'm going to go back to this step over here and I'm going to look for different solutions that we have instead of doing what we just did. So instead I'm going to take this path and so far it's been working for us. And similarly, let's say I get stuck again. So instead of going back to the beginning, I'm going to backtrack or take a step back. So I'm going to go over here and look for other ideas or paths. So another path we have is this side, right? So I'm going to take this path and if I keep following it, I'll get to the ending. So that's a very simple idea of backtracking where you move a step back and try to look for a different solution in order to get the further next steps correct. So finally, we have our Sudoku over here. I'm just going to use this board as an example. So we're going to go step by step on how we can solve the problem. So the first step is going to be to look for an empty cell. Okay, so now we're going to have two conditions. So there might be a condition where everything is filled up and we do not have any empty cells. And in that case, that means that we're done with the question and we're just going to return what we have so far, right? But now let's say there is an empty cell, right? So there is empty cell. And in that case, we're going to go to the next step. And if you look at our board right now, we have a ton of empty cells. So now we're going to step two. So in step two, we're going to fill the empty cells with the values. And what values are we going to use? We're going to use the numbers one through nine. And we're going to start off with one and we're going to fill it all up all the way up till nine. So now we need to understand when do we stop giving it the numbers one through nine? And the answer is we're going to keep giving it the numbers one through nine until we find an acceptable solution. So we need to understand what that acceptable actually means. And that actually refers to these three rules, which are common to all Sudoku games. So the first rule is that horizontally each row. So each row must contain the numbers one through nine without any repetitions. So horizontally each row must have the numbers one through nine. Similarly, vertically, each column should have the numbers one through nine. So vertically like this, each of our columns must have the numbers one through nine without any repetitions. And we have a third rule which says each block. So each block must have the numbers one through nine. And if you don't know what the block means, 
if you look at our board more carefully, you can see these bold lines over here, which divide our 9x9 Sudoku board into a 3x3 board. And each of these blocks looks is a 3x3. So this is what one block would look like. And in each block, you're going to have the numbers 1 through 9 without any repetition. And if our solution solves all of these three conditions, then in that case, that means that we have an acceptable solution for now. So now let's look at what the next step to this problem is. So now what's going to happen is if our solution is not acceptable, we're going to try the next number. So let's say we try the number one, it doesn't work out. We're going to try number two then three until something works out. And if nothing works out, then in that case, we're going to go one cell back and look for a different solution for that cell. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So let's say uh, we have found a solution over here, whatever it is, and we found a solution over here. And now we're looking for a solution for this third block over there. And, and what happened is that for that block, we've tried all of the numbers from one all the way through nine and nothing seems to work. So in that case, that means that the problem might be with something previously. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna backtrack and we're gonna go and look for a different solution for this number. So let's say previously it had a value of two. Now we're gonna check it with three until we find a next acceptable solution. Now. Let's say this also does not have any acceptable solution. So we try everything from one all the way through nine. So that means the problem is further behind and we're going to go back one more step to the first thing that we have and we're going to look for a different solution there. So you might be thinking, how are we going to call these uh, functions each and every time? So we're going to be using recursion in order to do that. And it should be a lot easier to understand inside of the code. So this is the code that I wrote. And uh, I use this package called tabulate. And all it does, it takes the list that you have and it just prints it in a way that looks more presentable. That's all it does. Okay, so I started off with initializing our Sudoku board. And what it is, it's a nine by nine matrix. So we have nine lists and each of these lists over here represents a row and each element inside the list represents the column. Okay, so now that we have this, so this is our nine by nine matrix. And I just want you to notice one thing. So when I have a blank space in my Sudoku board, that is represented with a zero. So zero means that I have a blank space. Okay, so I made a function which just prints out the board, nothing much. And now we have this function here called empty cells exist. And what it does is it looks for an empty cell. So it iterates through the columns, the rows, and once we find an empty cell, it's going to give back the index of the row and the column of where the empty cell is. Again, if you want to look at the code in more detail, the link is in the description. Okay, so is our choice good or not? So more specifically, I meant to say, is our choice acceptable? So to do that, I have made a function called valid number check, and it's going to take in the current number that we want to put for that cell. Uh, the row, so the index uh, of the row and the index of the column. And we're going to use that to see if it's an acceptable solution. So we're going to check vertically, we're going to check horizontally, and we're also going to check in the three by three box that we were talking about, the grid. So if any of these cases do take place, then we're going to end up returning false, which means that that number is not acceptable. But Let's say we pass through all of these three cases, and in that case, we're gonna end up returning true. And now we're gonna have our final function called the solver, right? So our solver, we're gonna start off with checking for an empty cell. So we're gonna get our empty cell, and if there are no empty cells, and in that case, when we do not have any empty cells, we're going to, going to return true. That means that we're done. We found all of the possible solutions and we're done solving the problem. So now that we do have an empty cell, so in that case, we're going to give the i and j values. We're going to get the values for the row and the column where the empty cell is and store it in i and j. And then we're going to go inside of a for loop. So for the numbers 
in the range 1 through 9. So this goes from 1 all the way through 9. And we're going to plug these values inside of our valid number checker. And we're going to look for them until we find a valid answer. And once we find a valid answer, we're going to change the value of whatever that cell has. So the cell currently, since it was empty, had a value of 0. And now we're going to change it to that number of the acceptable solution. Now again, we're going to call the solution. So this is where the recursion comes into play. So we're calling the solver function again. And what this is basically doing, it's checking the next step. So we're going to, if solver function is true, then we're going to return true. So before we go into that, let's just look at what the solver function is doing. All it's doing is, let's say we finish step one. We're now going to do the same thing, but now we're going to check it with step two. That's all this function is doing by calling it again. Now, there might be a case where we tried everything, right? So we're going to try... So we're going to try all of the numbers from 1 all the way through 9 and we do not get a solution. And in that case, we're going to reset the previous cell's value to 0. So all that's doing is it's removing its previous value and now we're going to check it with a new value. That's all that's happening. So whatever the previous cell is, changing its value and we're going to look for a new value which is not the same as the old one. And so that's what this else statement here does. So what does return if solver return true? So this is for the case that we've filled up our entire board. So because once we fill up our entire board, we're not going to have any empty cells. And when we do not have empty cells, we're going to return true. Hence making the value of solver to be true. So once we get true here, we're going to exit out of our function and we're just going to return true. So uh, over here, I'm displaying the board before solving it. And now I'm going to call the solver function. And if that is true, so if we found a solution, I'm going to display that solution. But if I did not find a solution and I got a value of false back, I'm going to print out that there is no solution available. So let's just do it for this Sudoku board over here. And finally, we're going to run our program real quick. and. So this is the unsolved version on, on top. So you can see the zeros. And finally, you have our solved version. So how can you check whether we actually got a proper result? So to check it, you look at each row, look at each column, and look at each grid to see whether it follows. It has the numbers 1 through 9 without repetition. So just for a quick example, if you look at this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And let's say vertically over here, so 1, 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, sorry, 8, and then 9. And if you want to look at each grid, that also will have the numbers 1 through 9. So for example, let's look at this, these three, so this grid over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if you want to check it, you could check it out. But as it is, the whole point of this video is for you to understand the algorithm behind solving this. So by no means does this look really good or appealing, but you could, once you understand the algorithm, you can do so much more with it. You can make some sort of GUI in order to visualize it better. Uh, you could use Pygame in order to do that, or you can make some sort of web application using JavaScript or something in order to make it uh, so that people can visualize it, or, or you could just add so much more functionality to it. But the whole point of this is, once you understand the algorithm, you can do so much with it and the possibilities are endless. So again, thanks a lot for watching. Do let me know what you thought about this video. Uh, any feedback is highly appreciated. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye.